um, it's uh, supposed to be my immortal game. And I did an, I did an analysis on my YouTube channel um, about this game. Die meisten von euch kennen diese Partie vielleicht, weil ich die Partie schon auf dem Kanal analysiert habe. Aber ich bin mal gespannt, wie Anna darauf reagiert, wenn ich sie jetzt zeige, diese Partie. Für die, die sie noch nicht kennen, schnallt euch an, ist eine geile Partie. Es ist wirklich mein Unsterbliche. Immortal means in German unsterblich. And um, let's see if you like the game as I do, as many others before and many others before. So I'm black. White is playing d4. I'm playing d5. Okay, you are open to comment whatever you want. I will show you only the moves and you comment the game for my, for my viewers, okay? Okay, d4, d5, very solid, uh, Georges. You can play for my uh, solid team too. <laughs> <laughs> c4. I think you will uh, change. I think you will change your opinion immediately now. Uh, what do you play here? The main moves are like uh, d takes c4, queen's gambit accepted, c6, it's slav, or e6, and then it's still unclear, not clear. Okay, it's declined. Uh, Uh, Queen's Gambit declined, but uh, what will happen after that? It may be many of the options. What did you play? Ah, Knight C6. Okay, so you were trying to complicate the game starting from the very first moves. And Knight C6 is the move that creative players like to do. Like, uh, for example, Morozevich played it, Richard Rapport. And uh, they did it quite successfully. Creative player. I underlined it. Um, uh, some background information. At that time, 2003, 2004, 5, I was playing the Chigurin um, in several games. But nowadays, I'm not playing it anymore. Okay. Go, you go on. He takes. Yeah, one of the possibilities. The others uh, were like knight c3, knight f3, some normal development moves. But c takes d5 is one of the main ones. Yeah, queen takes d5. e3, and now I believe e5. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Attacking the pawn on d4, yeah. Attacking the pawn on d4, because when you play the knight on c6, you have to prove that it was done for a reason. You can't play c5 after the knight is on c6, so you have to try to push e5. If you manage to do everything quickly, uh, then it will be successful. If not, uh, then then you try another time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Knight c3. Knight c3, hitting on the queen, bishop b4, I guess. Bishop d2, you took. Uh, did you ever play the Chigori? I assume not. Uh, no, but I did play Blumenfeld Gambit, it's second move. Uh, no, I mean, I did play Albin's uh, Contra Gambit, second move, e5. So it has some similar ideas. Mm -hmm. And also half correct. Oh, f3, uh, trying to push e4, castle. Now e4, queen has to move, queen to d6. Basically, we can uh, say a few words about this position because after bishop c3, b takes c3, there was a trade of the piece. And when there is the trade of the piece or trade of the pawn, um, the position uh, changes quite a lot. So white has two pair of bishops advantage. And after f3, e4, white got the central advantage. Also, white has a very good center, uh, but at the same time, look at white's development. Uh, all the pieces, most of the pieces are still not developed and uh, this is like a bit dangerous. White has to take care of that. Maybe if I played with white pieces, I would uh, try to play something like d5 to close the position a little bit so that it's safer. What was played? Mm. Uh, D5 actually is uh, the main main line, I think. Um, but he played bishop e3 was the second most played move here. 
And okay. there is not much theory uh, about this position. There was not much theory about this position. And I didn't know the position at all, to be honest. I only, I only knew d5 a bit. Um, this was There are some games with Morozevich with black, but I didn't know bishop e3, so I was completely on my own here. Mm -hmm. So now I played... Now, what did I play here? What, what do you play? Uh, you have to create some pressure over the d4 pawn to continue this way, or you can try to maybe... Uh, play a rook e8 and uh, create some tactical ideas uh, that comes with knight e4. But after rook e8, now white can play d5 and maybe it's to, white, yeah. to white's favor that the bishop is on e3 and your rook is on e8. Yeah. I had the same idea when I took on d4 with the pawn. Of course he took back and it seems like he has the fantastic center here. Yeah. Um, and now played rook e8. Mm -hmm. So knight e4 is in the air. Bishop f5 uh, can be also dangerous because we see the pin over the e file. Thank you, Georgie, for pointing it. And the rook from a8 will come to d8. So black has a very clear plan and uh, white position is a bit shaky, to be honest, already. Okay. Leute, ihr seht, ihr seht warum sie so gut ist, ne? Uh, okay, he played... Uh, queen d2. Of course, e5 is not working, guys, in the chat because of just take, take, and um, take, and black, uh, white is losing the bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you were hoping for that, but that didn't happen. E5 would be a big blunder yeah. for us, grandmaster. <laughs> and guys, this guy here, uh, Merab Kagunashvili, is a grandmaster. He was at that time only some 18 years old, I think. And he was an upcoming uh, grandmaster, and everybody thought that he will be a super grandmaster some years ahead. But in the end, he didn't really um, succeed. No, I think he stayed always at this uh, uh, hello rating. Uh, he reached the uh, twenty six hundred, and uh, I think even now his uh, his rating is uh, something like near twenty six hundred, maybe twenty five eighty. Mm. So he's quite mm. a strong grandmaster. Sure, sure. Okay, Queen D2. And now, okay, Chat. Die Frage auch noch euch, was hat Schwarz hier gespielt? Ich hoffe, ihr habt das meiste verstanden. Schwarz hat Entwicklungsvorsprung, Weiß hat ein super Zentrum. Allerdings ist der König in der Mitte. Okay, Chat, was glaubt ihr, was Schwarz hier gespielt hat? Anna, um, what would you guess uh, here? Uh, what do you guess? Um, how did I continue here? I think I was mentioning some ideas with bishop f5, and bishop f5 looks tempting to me in this position too, due to the fact that after bishop f5, if white takes on f5, uh, we take uh, rook takes e3, queen takes e3, rook e8. And that looks good for black. Maybe we can show this line. Uh, what did you... Uh, sorry? I was talking about bishop f5 idea. Yeah, this was the move I played, yeah. Ooh. Bishop yes, and if, yeah. if e, e takes a 5, then rook e3. Um, or just knight e5. Or just knight e5. Yeah, just knight e5, and uh, black is winning back the piece with a better position, obviously, because, yeah, also the d4 pawn and the king. A, a lot yeah. of activity. Yeah, taking on a 5 doesn't make sense at all. Um, he played bishop e2 in the game. Um, just trying to close the e file. In a subsequent game, I think there was some knight e2 played, which is better. But let's not. Um, yeah. Let's knight e2, bishop e4 may seem very dangerous, and knight e2 closes the bishop. So um, yeah, this would it's be not the... clear. Knight e2 was the best. Yeah, this is a line. Yeah, I have analyzed. Okay. Oh, good. No, my analysis go very deep, so I don't want to show all the analysis. Just um, let's just stay on the. Uh, let's just go on with the game. Bishop e2. Okay. Um, of course, I took now on e4 with the bishop. Mm -hmm. Take, take. Queen b2. Uh, yes, let's also maybe mention why queen to b2, because for example, if queen goes to c2, then there is knight d4, there is a check on b4, 
there is knight d4 for too many too many reasons yeah so he has to go to b2 uh this is a very critical position uh, theoretically speaking um with latest uh, engine development you can go very deep into such positions but at that time it was uh, it's very funny stockfish or uh, fritz showed me completely different lines uh, than what the latest engines are showing me now in this position it's very funny to analyze your old games <laughs> yeah the engines uh, are improving so and with your intuition yeah. intu intuition intuitively Intuitively, knight g3 looks good, mm -hmm. and it's a very concrete move. We are attacking the bishop on e3 and the rook on h1. After h takes g3, we try rook takes e3, and we then threaten taking the, the pawn on g3, taking the pawn on d4. Also, rook from a8 is coming to e8. So maybe this, or maybe... Maybe knight before knight d5, but I still somehow like knight g3 more. Chat, das ist auch eine Frage an euch. Vincenzo 747, danke dir für den Prime zweiter Monat. <lacht> ähm, für die, die später hinzugekommen sind, wir machen erstmal hier den Wetteinsatz mit Anna. Ich zeige meine unsterbliche Partie, 20, 30 Minuten. Und dann werden wir äh, zusammen auf Englisch Carlsen gegen So kommentieren. Okay, bleibt also dran. Keine Angst, wir werden hinter äh, Carlson und so kommentieren. Ähm, sie hat jetzt vorgeschlagen Springer G3, auf Englisch natürlich. Und sie hat aber auch gleichzeitig erwähnt Springer B4, Springer D5. Ich merke, wie stark sie ist. Um, I realize now how strong she, she really is, because she's really um, um, suggesting the moves, which are really critical in this position, without even thinking too much. Um, in this position, I played Knight G3. But this isn't the best move according to the latest engines. The best move uh, is here knight b4 with a very big advantage for black. Um, idea is knight d5 actually like Anna suggested to attack the bishop. Um, and but the, but but the lines are very very difficult. So we are we are not going. I'm not going. I'm not going to show you uh, the lines. Let's go to knight g3. Because later there are several other interesting variations I want to show you. But these are the critical moves. Yeah, also when you were talking, I thought about Queen G6 can also be like one of the candidates most hitting on G2 pawn. Just another opinion. Mm -hmm. I played Knight G3 because this is very concrete. I'm attacking the rook. But you, what is the problem with this move? After, of course, he has to take. I take the bishop. But here is a slight problem. What do you think, Anna? A slight problem. What can be a slight problem? Uh, positionally, dynamically, maybe. Something changed. Something changed in this position for White. Positively, uh, pos for him. Something positive. Pieces, pieces changed. Uh, and, uh, well, the most tempting move is, I think, Lone Castle, because you yeah. get your king away from the pin, and you also protect the d4 pawn. Yeah, yeah. So this is like a bit unclear what's happening after long castle. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, I opened the h file for the rook, and this is in some lines it's um, a good thing for him. So this is the reason why knight g3 wasn't the best move. We will see it later that the open h file is a uh, um, why it was important. <laughs> yeah, it's important for him now in some lines. Okay, he castled. Um, Long, of course. Now I played knight before. Knight before, yeah. That was that was what I was expecting. There is the threat of rook c3 check. Um, and yeah, he and rook c2. Rook c2, yeah. He can't take, let's say he plays this, he plays this check. He can't take because of this and losing the queen. And this is the reason why he played bishop c4. Um, controlling the uh, guarding the pawn and attacking also this pawn here. So, Chad, we could have gone further, Chad. What do you think, Anna? How did I continue here? Hmm, um, so many moves. Okay, b5. We can try to. Uh, 
make this move. Uh, queen c6 perhaps doesn't work because of queen takes before. Uh, what else? We can, of course, bring one more rook to the game. But do we have time for that? I mean, we always have to be careful in such positions because we are a piece down and we have to do something very quickly. Yeah, your first uh, suggestion was again the best. I played b5. Okay, good. Bishop b3. B b5 mm. is the best move, actually, um, also according to the engines. Um, he didn't go back to the b3. He took on f7. Um, if he goes back, if he goes back with the bishop to b3, then black continues the attack with a5. Mm -hmm. And this is basically winning for white, uh, for black. For black. Let's see one line. Okay, this is somehow the best line for white. And here white and black has the advantage according to Stockfish. This is the, my latest analysis, I think, on this position with a lot of attack. Yeah. But still the game is going on yeah? from a human perspective. Yeah, black, black has the uh, activity and, uh, and the white skin is still quite weak. So this is the main point. Mm -hmm. But um, he took on f7. Here. Yeah. I took. Now we actually have a choice here. We have, we could, uh, we had to calculate king f7, queen f2 because this was the idea behind the sacrifice, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now we, uh, we just go back with the king. Why? Uh, why? Because we have the idea of queen c6, queen c2 after white takes the rook. Ah, uh, she is so strong. She's so strong. It's amazing. She sees everything within a second. Um, we have, of course, two possibilities. Queen of six, guarding the king or going back with the king. Um, I missed something in this line. Take, take, check. King d2, check. And now I missed this one, I Can think. Yeah. I missed this one and um, with a double threat of winning the rook and the queen. Ah, so you preferred queen f6 and then queen c6, so yeah. that with the king on f7 you have rook e8. Oh, fantastic! She reads my mind. Amazing! She reads my mind. Wow, she's so strong. Oh, Leute, habt ihr das verstanden? Ich habe Dame f6 gespielt, weil ich in der gleichen Variante Turm e8 haben wollte hier, um die Dame zu gewinnen. Was ich aber übersehen hatte, war in der Variante, der König kann einfach nach g8 zurück. Und dann bei dem Schach hier, da hatte ich übersehen, Dame schlicht G2. Wenn ich mir das heute noch anschaue, denke ich mir, hm, this looks easy. Why did I miss this? I don't know. Uh, because this is a double threat, a deadly double threat. And black is obviously winning. Maybe I had some, I was fearing this one, maybe? No, but it's also rookie 8 check, yeah? It's not the only threat here. He can't so you can take... go queen h8 and the r rook h8. Yeah, this is mate. Yeah. So there was something else. Pretty. I... Sorry? Pretty. Pretty, yeah. And um, of course, there is also the line. There are some lines with king b2, yeah? Yeah. But this should be made somewhere here. Of course. At least we have the perpetual with queen a4, queen c2. And uh, this is always good because when you're calculating the lines and sometimes you're calculating long lines, it's good if you see the perpetual. Yeah. Uh, because you can come up to that point and then even maybe you can find something better than the perpetual. Something like this here. Something like this, but uh, after king c3, there was also knight d5. Wasn't it just easier? I mean, here it's mate, but even if you don't see the mate, yeah, yeah, we can also win the queen here. We can win the queen, and <laughs> yeah, which basically wins the game too. I can't recall if I saw that line. To be honest, it's a long time ago. I only remember this. Um, what you mentioned that I wanted to plan to win the queen here with rook e8. I remember that uh, idea. So 
it would have been really a perfect game if I would have played King G8 here. It would really be a fantastic ending to the game. But I played Queen of 6. And now he saw, of course, he can't take the rook. And he took the queen. Mm -hmm. And now we're entering so, this end game. Yeah. So you had to work harder to win this game. Uh, not really. Let's go on. Let's go, because uh, black is a pawn up. And the pawn on g3 was hanging, the pawn on a2 is hanging, but we have to be careful with some tactical ideas like knight h4 or knight e5 is coming now. So we have to take um, uh, some, yeah, some Pro safe... Prophylactic measures, yeah. Prophylactical measures against it. You know? I'm very proud of this move because usually I'm very, very aggressive player and h6 is very prophylactic just to go out of this check here. Knight h4, and I'm going back to h7. Now he plays this one. Rook f7. Uh, yes, so knight f5 is the threat, so we have to uh, calculate a bit if we take the g3 pawn, I think. I took it. You took it, but still knight f5, then rook h6 is the idea. I was not like 100% sure what's going on, but after knight f5, uh, what can we do? We can take on g2 or... Ah, wait, the rook is hanging. Or we can play rook c3, rook c2 and then followed by king g6. But maybe the easiest is to take on g2, rook h6, king g8, yeah, and both of the rooks are hanging. No, both rooks are hanging. You can't take on h6, actually. Yeah, so that this, this was... Uh, yeah. This worked perfectly for black. Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks a lot, Sirak7, vierter Monat, ganz liebe Grüße aus den Bergen in Österreich. Machst du Urlaub? Somewhere, uh, someone from the mountains in Austria. Oh. Mm. I don't know if he's making some vacation. He took on, F, uh, on C7. Now played Rook of 8. Okay. Rook 7 and I believe Rook F2. Perfect. I just like the coordination of your pieces now. Knight d5, the knight is coming to c3. Why is the engine showing some moves? Ah. B4. <laughs> it's not difficult for the engine to show some moves, so that's why he's doing that. <laughs> no, I switched it off now. It was switched on. I didn't know that it switched on. Uh, B4, I like that. I'm. Yes, I also like this. And Why? B4, then you can put the knight on c3, then you bring the rook from g3 to the second rank, and then you basically checkmate. Okay, thanks for helping. So, knight c3, I guess? No. No? Chat, what have I here played? Grüß dich, Sebastian. Johnny, grüß dich. Real Master Broccoli, sauber. What did I play here? Uh, what did you play here? Um, a rook A3 is... Oh, Burley Sandalus. Yeah, rook, rook A3. Yeah, rook, is, rook takes A3, B takes A3, rook C1, knight C3. This is nice. Yeah, I played rook a3. He can't take okay. on. He resigned actually here at this moment. Um, he can't take here because he's losing the rook. Mm -hmm. He's a P, uh, exchange and a pawn up, pawn down. And the other line is, of course, if he takes, then I take, and then I have this typical mating pattern on a2. And he can't even play this one because of knight c3, which is very. Cute, this one, due to this nice pawn here. Yeah. So this was, this was a very nice game, Georgie. I really liked it. And even, uh, I mean, you played Queen F6, which uh, prolonged the game a little bit, but still it was winning. So in this game, you didn't make any single mistake. And uh, there were so many nice uh, lines and so many nice combinations. Are you Very proud good. of me? 
Are you proud of me? Uh, I am proud, yes, and I really liked uh, that you share this game with the with me and with the viewers. It's the first time I saw it. And uh, to make a summary of it, I think maybe Bishop E3 was um, like one of the biggest mistakes in this game because after Bishop E3, E takes D4, C takes D4, rook E8, you got a lot of activity.